Fleury. Here. Councilman Conti. Here. Councilman Halco. Here. Councilwoman Mazur. Here. Council President Simaluka. Here. Uh, please rise for a salute to the flag. Please remain standing after the salute. Uh, moment of silence for the victims of 9-11. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Adequate notice of this meeting has been sent to all council members. On August 28, 2014, and to all legal newspapers in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. The public is hereby advised that any statements made during a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Saddlebrook may not be privileged or protected, and that persons or entities who take issue with such comments or are offended by saying may and have in the past so we will redress through the courts. Any member of the public who addresses the council speaks for themselves and not for the council. All right, before we start our regular order of business, which generally is opening the meeting to the public, I believe there are some presentations to some, uh, some youngsters in the audience, Mayor. Thank we have you, a couple council of teachers President. here from Long? Long School. Long School. And before we get to the presentations, after we've had the moment of silence from 9-11, I'd like to read the proclamation from our township proclaiming September 11th as Patriot Day. Whereas today we remember those who suffered and lost their lives during the terrorist attack on September 11, 2001. Heroic sacrifices were made that day by law enforcement, ambulance, and firefighter personnel in conjunction with ordinary citizens who placed their lives in harm's way to serve their fellow citizens. And whereas the outpouring of sympathy and compassion, not only from our own country, but from other countries who were appalled at such an inhuman deed, will never be forgotten. Numerous American citizens participated in moments of silence, vigils, and memorial services in remembrance of those lost and in thanksgiving of those saved. And whereas the date of September 11 will forever be engraved within American history as a day of great sorrow, but also as America's finest hour as individuals from all walks of life answered the call to help those in need, comfort the suffering, and generously contributed to relief efforts to aid their fellow Americans. In commemoration of this day, by a joint resolution approved on December 18, 2001, the Congress of the United States of America authorized and instructed the President of the United States to designate September 11th of each year Patriot Day. Now, therefore, be it resolved that as the Mayor and the Township Council of Saddle Brook they do hereby proclaim September 11, 2014 as Patriot Day and order that Township American flags be lowered commencing at 8.46 a.m. in memory of all those who lost their lives as a result of the terror attack on September 11, 2001. God bless you. And in addition to this, um, please everyone take note on September 11th, we will have a small ceremony here in front of the town hall. We're planning to assemble at 8.15. We've notified um, the township employees. We have two of our pastors coming for their blessings and prayer. So anyone out there in the public who would like to join us, and we've invited the schools, the Board of Education, and we'll have a brief ceremony, and the fire truck will be out here and of course we'll have the ringing of the bell at the time that the planes hit. So please spread the word, join us if you can. It's a day of memory that we'll never forget and that we want to keep close to our hearts. That having been said, we have a group of youngsters here from Long School and they did a project that I became aware of throughout the summer 
and knowing that the school year was beginning and hopefully we could have as many of these students here as possible. And it's my understanding we have six here this evening, I believe out of maybe 10 or 11. We have their two advisors here. And they decided to participate in an environmental awareness challenge of which they received a grant of, I believe it's over 900 and actually it's $992.09. <laughs> so those nines are very important. And I do want to apologize because when we did send the invitation out for these youngsters to be recognized, we didn't receive any names back. So therefore, I do have one proclamation, but I have our great group here. I have their names and addresses, and I told them that we will be delivering to their homes individually their proclamations for tonight. So. It's my honor to invite up our environmental club from Long Memorial School with their advisors. So please step forward. And we have one young fellow who unfortunately had an accident. It's been living through, he said, of the first week of pain and hopefully he doesn't have to have surgery. So I'm all, and I almost tripped on his leg. Why don't you come on up? We have our retiring principal, let me tell you, retiring, <laughs> retiring, <laughs> retiring from long, we're going yeah. to miss you, Thank truly you. miss you. I would like one of the students to at least start and explain the program. Now, for the public's information, the BCUA is in charge of waste management in all 70 counties of Bergen County. And that's very important today to the environment. And our group here from Long took it one step further with the encouragement of their advisors to enter this contest. And we're so proud, but I think myself, I'd like to know the details as well as the general public out there, okay? So we will start off with whoever wants to volunteer first. Would everyone state their names also, please? And we'll go down. Everyone gets a chance to speak. Um. We just wanted to help the environment because we thought that it would look nicer on our school and we planted flowers and helped clean up trash around the school in the garden. And I thought it was good because I think our school looks way better now with all the improvements we made. Oh, Nicole. Six. My name is Jennifer, and I helped the Environmental Club by planting uh, like blueberry plants and sunflower plants. And I also, we also talked about the Environmental Club and how we were going to help the environment and how we were going to get together with the middle school and the high school. Um, my name is Alexa, and I helped by planting all the flowers around a tree and we planted all types of flowers and it looks like really beautiful and I love to help the environment. Hello, my name is Amanda. We, we like to plant sunflowers and blueberry plants around the school, uh, around a tree in our backyard of the school. I'm Alyssa, and we, in addition to everything else we did, we also put recycling bins in most of the classrooms and in the cafeteria. Yeah. Uh, I'm Brian, and we also, we found trash that people left on our playgrounds. Dri uh, it's called driving? 
driveways uh, and our field in the back. We cleaned it up and yeah. Um, we started this environmental club. It should have been this year, but Mr. Iannacone and I really wanted to get it going last year. So we opened it up to the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders of Long Memorial School with the third graders slowly entering into it. Um, we, during Earth Day, the whole entire school made posters to hang around the building, through the hallways, in the stairwell. It was really nice. With that, we plan on, we discussed last year our goals for the school and what to do for the community as well. And we're going to implement a lot of that this year. The one thing we did do last year in June, the garden, the PTA 10 years ago dedicated a garden to a kindergartner who unfortunately passed away. And it needed a little bit of upkeeping and so we decided because the flowers are dying. So the environmental club and us decided to redo the garden with donations from flower shops throughout the town and the students bringing in supplies that we may need. With that, we put in a grant to try to get money to order the supplies needed to make this environmental club so successful. And that is the grant that, yes, yes, that's the grant that we got that we plan on putting towards the proper tools and equipment and safety precautions for the students to have. If you want to add anything. Sure. Uh, my name is Peter Iannacon, uh, fourth grade teacher. I also first want to say thank you to um, the, the Board of Ed and the principal and the administration and everybody here who's listening. To, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here and to have this club. And the grant was part of this club and it's, getting, uh, gave us, it's giving us supplies and many things that we can use throughout the school and with, within the club to, to, uh, to use. So. So we're really excited to have this uh, this advantage and this this to use. So um, we really thank also the uh, the BCUA <laughs> who's giving us the money and uh, and it's a great opportunity. So we're really happy. We have a great uh, students in the club and it keeps changing numbers because some people are joining, some people are leaving. So you know um, it's a uh, it's so th that's why it's part of the reason why the numbers are changing a little bit. But no, it's this is the the grant is one each year, but. The, the club, it's one year, but hopefully it's, it's going, going to go on from year to year to year. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Frank Mazzini, principal of Long School. Um, if you know anything about Long Memorial School, it's a school of community. And I have to thank Mr. Anacone and Ms. Loud because they help to continue the tradition that we live by, and that's community, both educationally and within the town. And I also have to thank the students who are here and those who couldn't be here tonight because they put so much time and effort into restoring Jack's garden and to spreading word about protecting the environment. And I know they're going to continue to do so. And it's just a fantastic thing that they've been doing. So we thank them both very much, the teachers and the students. But, excuse me, can I squeeze in? I have the certificate of recognition for all of you. And as I said earlier, you each will be getting one of your own. And put it in the room with pride because you worked hard. But also, this was a great opportunity, and I'd like to thank the advisors for this. And this was a great opportunity for me to get these students in here with their advisors because there is a future plan. I've been attending meetings with the Passaic Valley Sewer Commission and Rutgers University. And they have a program that I will be signing as mayor, entering into an, a shared agreement where they want to work with the students of Saddlebrook as well as the adults, and it concerns the environment. They were talking about flood mitigation, rain barrels, so, and rain gardens. So you people will be the ideal candidates with your permission and as you get reorganized in the school year, we'll be keeping in close contact because I think this would be a great project. You already are interested, you have backgrounds, of uh, experience, and that's what we need, experience. And then I'm hoping that other students will join 
and that your group will grow even larger than it is now. I mean, you're off to a great start, and we're so proud that you were able to get this funding, and I'm sure that through this program that we will be entering into as an agreement with the Township of Saddlebrook and Fairley in the Passaic Valley, there should be monies available to take this further for the improvement of not only the town, but the benefit of the education for the children, okay? So thank you very much, and I certainly appreciate that you came out. You all look great in your school uniforms, and good luck to Mr. Manzini on his new future career as he leaves Saddlebrook, and we're grateful for your contribution as it shows very well what you've done for the community. Thank you. God bless everyone. Put your fingers on it. Thank you again, and we'll be in touch. We'll have some special meetings here at the town hall in the future. Uh, when do you meet? We actually we do, we don't have a, a set schedule at the moment, but uh, we're we're going to have probably a meeting in early October, or if, or late September. Thank you, so. We'll keep in touch from town hall with any correspondence we receive. We'll send it over there, and then we can coordinate some future meetings, because I'm excited about it. I think it's really going to be fantastic, and you know, now that I've met the club, it's going to be even more exciting. So thank you, God bless, and you'll get your proclamations. Again, I apologize, and thank you to the advisors, because I know you do this out of your heart. Thank you. And. Good luck, <laughs> particularly to mom and dad who have to make sure you get in the shower out of the tub and all of that. Been there, done that with the uh, cast on my elbow and I didn't like it. <laughs> Thank you. We're proud of you. We do have a couple other presentations, and then after the presentations are over, we'll take a two-minute break, just in case anyone wants to take photographs. I'd like to call Dawn up. Our next presentation involves two of our students from track. Track. Dawn has been running the track program for many, many years now, and it seems that track gets lost in the shuffle of recreation. It, it's never been a group or maybe Dawn is so laid back that she just keeps this program going with the parents, with the students. Um, she excites children to join. She holds a track meet every year at the high school and the first time I went I was totally amazed. There were thousands of people there and, <laughs> right, at <laughs> least, I mean un unbelievable and it, it was a wonderful experience for me. So. I will have Dawn speak more about the program, but along with her, I'd like Ryan Myers and Erin Carraway to please step forward. <laughs> Congratulations, ladies. Now we're going to have your coach explain exactly what you want. I have it on paper, but I'd rather hear it from the person who has the experience, and then I'll have comments from you too. Hi, my name is Dawn. I'm, uh, the track commissioner here in Saddlebrook, which means I coach kids from first through eighth grade. Uh, but I don't do that alone, so I would definitely like to call up uh, some of the coaches that did show up, Bob Myers and uh, Ed Carraway, because um, I don't do this alone. Um, it is pretty time consuming, although we all love it, that's why we all do it. And um, I have a group of, it can range anywhere from 80 to, well, I'm sorry, 60 to 80 kids in the beginning of the season. We start in March, and this, this season was a little rocky season with the weather, but we managed to fare through. Um, my kids are fantastic, as well as my coaches. I definitely can't do this without them. Um, it's complete chaos in the beginning of the season, but we all have fun, and we all spread out and take a group. and. Uh, your work is chaos, is it's, but it's fun. It's so worth it. Um, our meets consist of, there's five original or standard meets that we go to, and they're on Sundays, and uh, we kind of just, we have fun. That's my goal in, in this team, is to have fun. So um, we start off with those five regular meets, the first one being at Saddlebrook, 
which is the biggest because it's the first of the season. So it's a little crazy. But after that, we get to sit back and relax and just watch our kids. And the best, the best feeling is watching a kid cross that finish line and smile. He's accomplished something. So with that, our, as our season goes on, um, after our five regular seasons, we have three, uh, three progressive uh, track meets. And each time you place within a certain range, you get to progress to the next level. So um, we have a qualifier meet, and then after that is the states. States, we had about 20 people make it, maybe? About 20 people. Um, from states, we go to regionals, and this year was, I apologize, I didn't go this year because I had a graduate. Where? Stockton College and uh, each year they kind of they move it around so some of these kids and we've been doing this for years really travel um, nationals however this year was in Texas and I had to go to Texas and with that they uh, I have Erin here who throws shot put and she placed 14th in the nation for her shot put <laughs> Ryan who 14 must have been our magic number because Ryan also placed 14th in the discus and that's out of the nation so these kids put a lot of time and effort and energy into this and it's um, it makes me proud I'm sure it makes everybody proud but we have a lot of fun and I'd like to say congratulations and thank you for all your time and effort you put in to that team Aaron, would you like to share with us your experience? <laughs> You're under high pressure here, okay? Explain exactly what your position is, what you do. Is it just track running? Is it, okay. I'm giving you a lead in. <laughs> Take it from there. <laughs> well, I, I do shot put. And what is <laughs> shot put? Um, it's a metal ball weighted, and you have to keep it on your neck and I always have to be like this and you can't push it out. You have to push it. You can't throw it. Shot put is a, for her age group, it's a six pound metal ball and what you have to do is you have to project this as far as you can but there's certain rules and regulations that you have to follow so there's a certain way to throw it and everything is a safety precaution. So not only do they have to throw this ball out as far as they can, but they have to throw it properly. So um, it takes a lot of time and effort to, to master this skill, and uh, she mastered it pretty well. Yay. <laughs> Her 14th in the nation, I would say. How much does that ball weigh? Six pounds. Six pounds, wow. You go, girl. I give you credit. I wouldn't be doing that. But, Erin, on behalf of the Community. It's just a small token of recognition with the certificate. And thanks again for making us proud. Keep up the good work. If you're 14 now, next year when you come back or after the next meet, we're going to see what number you're up to. So we're challenging you <laughs> publicly. Okay, now we're going. We're going to hear from Ryan. Well, this was what? How many? How many times have I done? Three. Three. Right, this is the third time I've gone, and like every time it gets farther and farther, and it's harder and harder to go. But I mean, if I keep placing as high as I do, I'll hopefully keep going. Yeah, no, I throw discus. Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, a weighted disc that you kind of spin and throw. <laughs> Uh, discus is like the shot put. It's um, more like a weighted frisbee. Um, Ryan throws a one kilogram discus, which is about equivalent to two pounds, two, uh, two ounces. Um, and what you do is you actually throw it in a spinning motion in a circle as far as you can. And I believe you threw at 95 at nationals, which for her age group is extremely well. Um, and both girls meter. Correction. 96 feet, yeah. That's all right. <laughs> um, and 
most of the, uh, most of our throwers have been progressing great over the years. We'd love to get some more kids in to do more of the running, but our throwing program for a small amount of kids have actually been placing, and we've been sending kids to nationals almost the last four or five years. We've re been represented at nationals by at least one or two throwers. So um, it's a lot of work that Dawn and a lot of the other coaches have been put into. Um, the kids practice three times a week usually. Uh, some of the throwers, I try to get them out as much as four times a week just to keep it going. But very proud of you girls, very proud. Ryan, how many years have you been doing this? Oh, I've been throwing, I have no clue how long I've been throwing. Four or five years. Four or five years. Wow, fantastic. Aaron? Two. Two years. Wow, fantastic, ladies. Well, upcoming rising female stars from Saddlebrook. We're proud, more than proud. And thank you for the time you put in to make us proud. Ryan, your certificate with our grateful appreciation for what you do to make us continue to go on and I think you instill courage to the other students into the future and the program will grow because of what you ladies have accomplished. Thank you and God bless. I'd like to congratulate the, the children of Long and the advisors um, for everything that they've done for the environment and to help beautify Saddlebrook. And uh, Nicole, if you want to help out by taking out my recycling every, every week. <laughs> Nicole is just a couple of doors down from me, and I've known her since she was a baby. So maybe you can, we'll talk about that. <laughs> um, again, congratulations to the track children, the coaches, parents, um, and I want to take uh, Special thank you to Dawn for being the uh, track commissioner for so many years. And congratulations on her children. For people who don't know, her children are amazing athletes and are nationally ranked in track. So uh, congratulations on that. All right, we'll take a two-minute break. If anyone wants to take photographs or just wants to stay, you're more than welcome to stay if you want to leave. Um, we'll just cut everything out for a couple minutes. Entertain a motion to open the meeting up to the public. Motion. Mr. Conti, Mr. Hoff, with a second, all in favor? Aye. Any objections? Seeing none, unanimous. The meeting is now open to the public. Any member of the public wish to address the council, please come forward. It's open, Larry. Good evening. Robert White, 595 Maple Avenue, Saddlebrook, New Jersey. I just want to say uh, congratulations to the students and the advisors and the staff at Long School and also our young track and field stars. And I think it's a wonderful thing that the mayor and council recognizes them at meetings like this. I just have a few comments, really some final thoughts uh, about Veterans Field. We had a special meeting and we had an opportunity, all of us, to discuss and our concerns and, and talk about the field. Um, it was a time, I, I think, that the council was able to disseminate a lot of information there which was a, a very good thing because there was a lot of information misinformation things that were were uh, being discussed out there in the public and it, it provided a good opportunity to uh, set the record straight and while I'm setting the record straight I just want to say that I'm not against the installation of a turf field in fact I'm for the kids I'm for recreation and I would like to see us enhance the facilities in town I, I believe in that I'm just not in favor totally of this pr proposed project uh, I feel that this grant we've been sitting on it for two years and I just feel that we're rushing a little bit and I've said this before I don't want to elaborate too much but just that I just feel that a lot more planning and maybe research could have went into it before we bonded this money and, and went forward with this project. Um, I think I read in the paper today in Elmwood Park, the Board of Education, they're doing a big project there. 
And what they did was, and I, and I kind of feel that we maybe should have done this too, is they put together a plan, and it's a master plan, with the whole works, a big, huge project, and now they're scaling down. So they started out with, this is our vision, this is what we'd like to see, and then they scaled down, because they had to, because they couldn't afford that big project. I just think what we did was, we said, okay, we have this $400,000 grant, we gotta match it, and before the end of the year, we need to, we need to act. And I think it was the act, the act was, well, let's put this turf in. So then from there, there was a lot of talk about additional things, phases. Uh, I, I, ha I happen to feel that if we're going to go forward with it, I think we're voting on it tonight, I think we should include those bathrooms in the parking. Why not? I, I think that that should be included in this project. Again, I don't know if we have the money to pay for it, but if, we are, if we're bonding, we could come up with that additional money. I want to see us do it the right way. I think what we need to do is, my, my problem with this project is we're not getting enough bang for our buck. That, that's just the way I feel. Uh, and my, just my final, this is really what I wanted to come up here and say, because I did have an opportunity to speak a lot about Veterans Field. I'm disappointed that we had that special meeting, and again, I, I'm complimenting the council. I, I think you did an admirable job of, of getting your point across, and you answered a lot of questions that people had. But we didn't, we didn't videotape it. And to me, it would have been a great opportunity for the whole public, all the residents in town, to, to watch it and, and, to, and to get those questions answered. But they couldn't because the special meeting was not was not videotaped. Uh, I know you don't normally tape those special meetings, but this was this was different. This was not no ordinary special meeting. A lot was riding on this. We're paying. We're spending a lot of taxpayers' dollars, and I just think it would have been it would have been better. It would have been really good for the public to be able to to hear what went on that night. Again, both sides. There was a lot of a lot of information disseminated, and and uh, it's a shame they didn't get that opportunity. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Larry Tychuk, 92 Claremont. Um, maybe Bobby, I can answer one of them questions. This council up here wants to do everything very secretive. They got elected by lying. And they're still lying. Okay. Uh, I've been asking this for about a year now, uh, to the chair, to the business administrator, uh, Pete. Did you ever get me that other answer from the OPA request that I asked you? I'm sorry, which one? The one about the payroll. Remember, there was one okay. questionnaire. You said I'll have to check with you. Uh, okay. I'll have to check Here's the you. thing, I'm Pete. Sorry. Pete, let me. You stonewalled me on the health benefits. You. All stonewalled on the raises, the secret raises and all of that. Okay, by law, you have seven days to get me that answer. And you didn't get it, and you're in violation. So whatever the penalty is, the penalty is. I will not stop here. I will follow forward. But I think I have enough information here from the last meeting. Uh, I asked the mayor and the business administrator for at least five months if there was any raises or anything like that. Now let me just set this straight. I have nothing against the person personally, anything like that. It could have been any employee of the town. But what you do is wrong, okay? You don't use any names here. You don't use any salaries. I'd like to know how the money was appropriated and how it was approved. And there's a letter here from the Teamsters, okay, that I think will straighten Mr. Simaluka's answer to telling me that he was a DPW worker since the year 2000. I said he did work for the town. I'm not arguing that. But this letter here states, I won't use his name, who is named in Article 1, Recognition Clause is the current collective bargaining agreement between Teamsters Local 560 and the Township of Saddlebrook, blue collar, shall be removed, which he was Parks and Recreation, and added to the Saddlebrook Township as a DPW labor. This letter is dated April 9, 2013. So to me, that's the day he became a DPW worker. And I don't believe the council seen this letter or had any access to it. Just one, uh, Mr. Camilleri, did you? 
No. No. Ms. Mazur, did you? No. What's the big secret? It was addressed to the business administrator, Pete Lodica. Okay? So when you read that ordinance or resolution, whatever it is, there's no name in here. Here's what it says. Whereas both parties have agreed to amend Article 1 over the recognition clause. I told you, Andrew, that th the contract was revised in 2013. And you kept insisting on 2000 and things. We don't have the money to do a lot of things. And to give a person a $17,000 raise, and we don't know where the funds came from, is a lot of money to me. Like I told you before, you bring a lateral police officer in here. He starts at 37000 this guy here started at 67000 The job was never advertised. Okay? Why does a police officer come in at level one and this guy went right to the pay scale of the other workers? It's not right. It's not right. It's, you know, like I say, you have political vendettas and political favors. Okay? And to me, this is not right. This does not smell right. And you people just keep getting away with things, away with lies, and away with hidden agendas, and no nothing happens. Nothing happens. Well, I hope in November that the people realize the people who lied to us do not belong sitting up here. And the lies continued through your four years of office. They never stopped. Here's a perfect example. A perfect example of a lie from the mayor and the business administrator. For five months I asked. I asked, did he ever receive two different paychecks? Did he ever do this? Did he ever? And the answers were no. You just stonewall us away. Until, like I say, you're trying to buy your time till the November election and try to come in as a long shot. Well, the long shot is, I hope that the people don't, and they recognize the damage that you have done to this town, okay? By lying to us, hiding things from us, and never being honest. I mean, a, a, a political person should be very honest, upfront, and should be able to answer any question on the spot. And if you can't, I'm not saying Andrew said that you should memorize the budget, but you should have the budget in front of you. So you can refer to it and get back to the residents. You people just think the week, the month is gone, shh, got away with another one. And that's the way you're operating. Like you got one more, one more beating till the, till the election. You got the October meeting and that's it. But it's not a beating. It's, it's telling you and telling the people what you did wrong. And it just continues and it continues and it continues. Here's a few things, for example. You told us you weren't taking the health benefits. You took the health benefits. We went out and made a t uh, petition. You revised the petition to grandfather yourselves in. You give raises to employees. Fictitious raises. I mean, they're astronomical raises in the business world. And, and we deny it. We deny it until it's proved. Okay, the paperwork shows it. It doesn't lie. The zero percent. Everything is underfunded in the budget from fuel to recreation. And you're going to sit here and tell us that we're doing a good job and we're going to do it and you have to raise taxes. And I say you have to raise taxes. You don't want to stay afloat. Sometimes you have to. Okay? And like I say, if you can show me you have a two percent raise for blue collar and a three percent raise for PBA. If you show me how you can cover that on zero, I want to know that because I need that knowledge. And I'm sure anybody else in business needs that knowledge. Mr. Ximaluka commended the courts for their, our revenue is up. How many cops did we hire? We put more cops on the street, obviously our revenue is going to go up. Because instead of just answering calls, they're writing tickets, they're pulling people over. And that's what we need. But when you're down to 23 men, you can just about make it to work. Uh, the mayor here has her group of parking people that she wants to go after. She wants to go after the Korean church, but yet at Sampson Field in a municipal building, it's okay. It's okay to jam the streets up in them areas. Only where she finds it necessary or it fits her needs. Uh, the neighborhood meetings that you talk about, they're a joke. The one at Cordwell Avenue, there was one person yet, there was a hundred people there. One person was for Cordwell Avenue. But once again, political favor, help a friend out. We buy the building. There was one objector. Why did the people waste their time coming? Why? There was one person for it, and it happened to be the owner's daughter. But the other residents were there objecting to it. Um, like I say, Cordwell Avenue. We buy it, sitting there. What is the rush for this field? Because in December, you're not going to be able to do a lot of work on a field, turf in the field in December, when the ground freezes and everything else. Now, the total part. Uh, bond there is 2.1 million. Is it true that Mr. Costa gets 10% of every project and every purchase that we do? 
in the town? Mr. Simaluka? Is it general? No, it's yes or a no answer. It's is it true, it's not is it true that Mr. Costa gets 10% of this $2.1 million? No, it's not true. It's not true. What does he get? Depends on the cost. Well, what's the cost? What, what is his percent that he gets? What's in his contract? It's not, the bond is not the cost. The bond is not the cost. The bond the is, bond the bond the is free. It's not 2.1 million. It's a, it's to go out, authorize bonding for 2.1 okay, million. Okay, well then what's his commission? Like? Eight, go ahead. Off the top of my head, it depends on what the cost come in. 100,000? 100,000, right. Like Do you know you can get an engineer to work full time for the town for $100,000? And that person would get benefits not people like you that take them unauthorized. We should look into that because we won't be paying for every project. There'll be an employee of the town five days a week mm -hmm. and you have them at your fingertips. Like I said, I've seen a bill this month, 21,000. Uh, and that's only for the month. Uh, Mayor, there's also a, uh, I guess it's the uh, Mayor's Association for Flooding, Saddlebrook, Rochelle Park, Maywood, Lodi, Garfield. How many of them meetings have you attended? Most of them, I doubt it, because I don't think that you were at any of them. Uh, you'll have to take that with them. Larry, I also. can take out my calendar for the last okay. three years, oh, okay. and I will bring them okay. to the last October now, the meeting thing, before the election, Excuse sir. Me, Mayor, it's my time right now. No, uh, that's okay, but you'll answer it when I want you to answer it, okay? Meal suck, and you don't answer that's it. That's called either. respect. The, no. That is respect, right. Uh, have had the respect to, to tell hey, time out, time out, time out. You're a professional. You, you don't talk. You don't talk. You can have an you, I'm not talking to you. Uh, there was a bond that went out the other month, 995000 for a roof. It was for a salt shed, and it was for repairing the pumping station on, on Mayhill Street. Now, what would be more important, the health and public safety of the people in that area to fix that pump so it doesn't flood, so we can maintain it. Hasn't even been mentioned yet. But we'll have special meetings on a turf field and everything else, and not on a pumping station where people are in danger. Mr. Costa said it needed to be done, blah, blah. We haven't even addressed that yet. We did the salt shed, which we haven't had for 10 years, so what's the rush there? And Thank a roof are. that's been leaking for five years. What's the rush there? So you people comments. do what you want to do, Mr. Ratajczak, and you do your it. time is up. You know what I'm saying? Anybody else wish to address Thank the you. council? Good evening. Omar Rodriguez, 275 Madison Avenue. Eight years as a councilman, four years as a council president. Uh, I'm here first to remind all the residents in Satterbrook that two years ago I ran for office, I lost by four votes, and that is not the sad part. The sad part is that more than 52 people vote in that election that were not residents of Satterbrook. They got relatives, they used to live in Satterbrook, but they have a different address. The reason I'm saying this is because I was lenient I was very human being two years ago, but I think that now they got the message and they know who they are. And especially elected officials, they're very, very, very aware who those people are. And I just want to remind all the residents that it takes anyone that commit fraud five years in prison. This time around, we'll be looking for those people if they're gonna vote again. It's not a threat, but it's a reality and we're gonna be looking forward for those people that we know that don't live in town. So please make sure that if you're gonna vote in November 4 in Satterbrook, you must be a resident of Satterbrook. So that is a service to the community public. Announcement actually, if you wanna call, but I hope that no one else later on said that they were not aware. And moving on with a few items that I had last month, I came here on um, Council President rebuttal when I said that he was costing us, one of the employees, $30,000. And I can prove him once again that he's wrong. It's not just 17000 Actually, when you add benefits, vacation days, personal days, uh, everything that an employee gets, you get paid more because your salary is higher. 
My problem is not even the salary. My problem is that transparency. Last year, I was here several times. I Oprah documents, and I got nothing against any employee. What I got a problem is when I come here in front of the public actually requesting you information and I said, if any other employee in the township of Soderbrook is getting m uh, any pay increase of more than the 2% that most of the employees were getting, and I was told repeatedly, three times I was told no. It's just three employees, including at that time, on just a reminder, it was the son of Councilman Conti. His son was getting a pay increase of $12,000. And then, needless to say, almost a year later, I'm finding out that I wasn't told the truth. That is sad, because this is supposed to be a place that you come and you get the right answer. You gotta be transparent if you're doing everything right. But again, I think that we were just taken for a ride. That's the same lie that they gave us when they said and they run that they were not going to take benefits, and they taken benefits. And let me just remind you that those benefits, for some of you that just have two meetings a month, is costing the residents, the taxpayers, almost $700 a week that you're getting in pay salary. So the least that you could do is to respond to all the questions of the residents, the way that they deserve to have a response. Not the response that you want to give, and if you're tired, you don't have the time, you shouldn't be elected to office. Because you're getting paid good money. No one in America, I think, gets $700 a week for a part-time job. Now. That's the same way that they also lied to us with the budget. There was a lot of questions about the budget, no answers, and it still was approved. That the same questions that was presented about Colwell property were not answered. They gave us the run around. What's going on? We're not collecting taxes. How much money are we losing, Council President? That is a shame. When it comes to numbers, it seems that either you haven't learned how to use a calculator yet, but I can tell you that all the taxpayers in Saddlebrook, they know how to stretch their money out. So for that reason, actually, I was literally, because I went out, out of my way, and I want to be a help, I want to be helpful, actually, to all of you, and especially Council President, I always rebuttal to me, <laughs> We're sarcasm, sarcasm, and I want to sit down with you. I want to go hand in hand. I want to teach you how to use a calculator. So I just bought you. That's a step one, accounting 101. So I bought your calculator today at no cost to the taxpayers. So and I wish that you can give me a call. We can sit down, uh -huh. and I can elaborate. Sure, you can have it. I bought it for you. I appreciate so, it. So you're sure. So if you don't know how to use it, you I will take the time. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's not even Christmas time. Thank you. I hope you use it well. I will. I appreciate it. This is great. I want to thank Mr. Rodriguez personally for this. He's leaving. Yeah. I wish he stayed for my my uh, my expression of gratitude. Um, I really appreciate this. Thank you. Any other member of the public? I'm leaving it here. I will just use it for, for uh, borough uh, township business. Is that Sylvia right? Zottarelli, 232 Lanza Ave. I was here Monday night, and some of the council, Tuesday night, sorry. Some of the council were in agreement of going on a high end for, a ref, for um, the bond, and some were on the low end, and you met in the middle. Isn't it smarter to just go on the higher end and include the bathrooms instead of worrying about a phase? I just hate to put a beautiful field in and not have a bathroom. And why can't we use the house? Do something with that to fix the bathrooms in there, maybe, as an option. That's really, I just want bathrooms included in this project. That's my thing. If we're going to do it, do it right from the start. That's all. You're bonding how much? Bond a little more and do the bathrooms. 
Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the public wish to come forward? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the meeting to the public. Motion. Mr. Camilleri, with the motion? Second. Second by Mr. Conti. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Seeing none, passing unanimously. Council comments? Mr. Camilleri? Uh, I have a few comments. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate the uh, kids that were in with the environmental club. That's nice. Again, those are nice, positive things that happen in our community, and I'd like to emphasize them. Uh, the track and field as well. You know, those kids, that's, that's one heck of an accomplishment, what they've accomplished. And um, as far as other sports go, the Saddlebrook Recreation Football is kicking off their season this Saturday home at Veterans. I wish good luck to all the kids and all the levels to have a successful and a safe season. Um, our high school team starts the following week. Um, it's really about all I have right now. Thank you. Mr. Coffey? Sure. Well, I don't even know where to start. Just push that push. Oh, let's start at the top here. I just want to uh, thank the congratulations to the Environmental Club for one for the track for two. Uh, that's on a positive note. On a negative note, well, I guess you can see here, uh, the audience can see it's election time. And uh, they're doing a pretty good job grandstanding up there and uh, calling out people and still talking, still talking about certain personnel, about, uh, about DPW. You know, I, t I take it as uh, DPW yeah, you might have you might have worked park and recreation, but um, I think I think he's in a DPW. Who's his part? Who was his supervisor at that time? Mike Calderon was his supervisor. What does he do? He does day to day. To me, that's working for the B DPW department. He's got to answer to Mike. Mike runs the DPW. He's got to answer to that. He's got to answer to him. Um, you know, I, I, I still believe in my heart that he is a, uh, a DPW employee, and it was just a title change, and along with title change, I guess money comes with title change, you know. Unfortunately, that's the way that is, but it is. Um, on Omar Rodriguez's comments, um, calling up my son, yeah, my son does work for the town. Did he get a raise? Sure. Remember, he won. My son also has a degree in business, and and I don't mind talking about his salary. He, when he started, he was thirty thousand dollars when he started for this town. Well, he's in purchasing. He's in purchasing and financing. I think that calls for a little bit more money. He worked for th three years before he did get a raise, and or maybe two and a half years. I'm not sure if it's that time, but I was not involved in any of the raises. I stepped out. Matter of fact, I sat with Mr. Ratajczak when they were talking negotiating money. I stayed out of it. That's, that's, I don't get involved in that day to day. That's not my thing. That's a conflict and I, and I, and I back away from that. Um, veterans field. I am, I'm all agreement for a veterans field. Um, I think the kids deserve it. I think we're also bonding enough to do the bathrooms and we're putting the bathrooms in. I mean, it definitely deserves it. We'll have a nice field, nice bathrooms. I, I don't want to see overbonding. I, I think we're, we're doing it. I think we spent enough time. We talked about this for six, seven months, had meetings, ones with the commissioners. Then again, we uh, residents and the commissioners again and see what was needed. And, um, you know, I, I, I think we, we did a good job doing this. The kids deserve it. The coaches deserve it. And uh, I can also can't see $400,000 going to waste. It's a bond that we're going to lose it as December if we don't use it. And I personally think that, um, you know, I can't speak for anybody else, but I personally think that we, we should be spending that money to do that, doing that field. And, you know, there's, I just don't want to keep going. I mean, I can keep going on and on and on, but, you know, they keep coming up and beating it, you know, um, a dead horse here. I mean, we keep talking about Veterans Field or why don't we do the high school, but 
you know, no disrespect to the, the school or or the president of uh, the board at that time, but we didn't see any plans coming across the table and say, hey, we got an idea here and show us plans or anything in that, in that matter. Um, you know, I mean, was it reached out? I think they reached out to us, but I don't. Nothing ever, you know, revolved from it. Involved from it, but you know, it is. It, it, as a matter of fact, it's an open. This is a a grant that's just for the recreation, and we couldn't transfer it anyway to the high school. So we have to use it for our recreation department, or or other parks in this town. But uh, I, I still believe that we're doing a good job, and we did a good job uh, in moving forward with this. And thanks. Thank you. Oh. oh, I was going to work my way back. Anthony Halpin. All right. I'll go. Ladies first. Okay. Oh, well, the mic. The mic. Green light. There Green. you go. I'd like to uh, also congratulate the Environmental Club. I'd like to see that expand. I think that's an awesome, awesome, um, you know, what they, what they did with the planting and everything is beautiful. Um, and also our track stores. What was, was ironic is those two little girls used to attend my, my preschool when they were little, and they used to like to throw things in. So <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. But anyway, congratulations to them and, and the whole track team, and also all of our children for having, uh, hopefully they'll have a great year, whether in sports or not, and a safe, fun uh, school year. And I'm happy to see that we do have the extra money and bonding for the, uh, the bathrooms. Happy to see that. Thank you. I too would like to congratulate uh, the kids from Long School. Um, when my son was a uh, in seventh and eighth grade, he was in the environmental club at the middle school, and they put something really nice together there. So it is nice that the the kids are keeping this up. It's it's really nice. And as far as the track uh, and field uh, kids, keep it up. Uh, maybe we'll see you in the Olympics one day. It would be nice be very nice and everybody would be proud of you and it's well deserved now as far as um, the politics at the podium all right it is election year we have the president of the Democratic Club coming up meeting after meeting we have the municipal chairman for the Democratic of Saddlebrook coming up and again talking and we have one of the candidates the only other person that came up tonight was Ms. Zottarelli and she gets up from time to time, but most of the time you see Mr. Ratajczyk, Mr. Rodriguez up there saying we did this wrong, we did that wrong. There's five of us up here. The, the four years that I've been up here, the majority of the votes have been unanimous. All of us have been in favor of everything. Or maybe one or two times there was an, one individual objecting. But everything passed because of this entire council, not because of myself, Andrew, and Mr. Conti, or Ms. Mazur, and Mr. Camilleri. We all worked as a team, and we still work as a team. And again, we all voted, most of the time unanimously. As far as um, the job title change, it was a job title change. He is entitled to the salary of that position, like any employer, employee, would be entitled to a promotion and the salary that comes along with that position. That information is out there, like I said at the last meeting. It's public record. It's Mr. public Hitchcock, record. Once again, please this refrain from speaking. It's not the public portion of the meeting. The salary ordinance is published year after year after year. Okay, all that information is online. Very easy to access. Again, it's just grandstanding by some, because they know that information's out there. They have the information. Most of the people that come to the podium already know the answer when they come up there. They're just trying to make people up here look bad. And again, I have to reiterate, we all, on almost every resolution and ordinance, voted unanimously. That's whether it was the health benefits, um, veterans field coming up, who knows, we'll see how that vote goes. The only thing was, was the budget. There was one dissenting vote for the budget this year. But prior year budgets, they all passed unanimously. Again, we work as a team up here, Democrats and Republicans. It's a team, a council team. 
and the mayor. And as far as Veterans Field, we have a grant. It would be a shame to let it go to waste and for the individuals that put the time in to get this grant, Mr. Varelli and Ms. Mrs. DiMaria and Mr. Ladico all worked on this to get the money. All right, they do need to be recognized for this. They put a lot of time and effort into getting this grant. And to just let it go to waste because it's gonna expire December 31st would be a shame. And like we are putting, we are hopefully gonna have enough money in there for the bathrooms. And it, according to the amount of money um, and the bid spec that Mr. Koss is putting together, there should be enough money in there to do the bathrooms and to do the field. Again, the, the field is key. Without the field, you don't have a veteran's field. Soccer plays there, lacrosse plays there. It's not just a football field. Baseball, softball, all of those sports, cheerleading, they're all there. It's for everybody, it's for all of the kids. All right, it needs to be done. The drainage there is atrocious. The kids play in a swamp when they play because there is no drainage there. It needs to be done. When I was on the council in 2008, they talked about putting seepage pits. Well, that never progressed. It, it just sat there. Well, now we have an opportunity to make it happen, and it should happen. If we let this money go to waste, it's going to be a bigger burden on the taxpayers next year because they're going to have to find the $400,000 that we're getting in a grant is going to have to be added to the bond and come out of taxes where it's coming from the county. There's also, we have an opportunity, if we do proceed with this project, to get more money for the, from the county for next year to Veterans Field. We also have an opportunity for community development money for the bathrooms for Veterans Field. So there is money out there, and we have an opportunity to get more money, which will reduce the amount of the bond, which will be a savings. The pump station. We've been talking about the pump station for some time. There were problems with the muffin launcher that needed to be repaired. All right, we did that. Valves need to be cut in now because of the problems that can arise and the work that needs to be done on a pump station. Without having valves in there that you could shut the, the system down for some time, they have to put um, these balloons in there to try and hold back the sewage so they could work on it. Which is, it works, but I believe the one time the, the balloon three, the balloon blew out and in came the sewage where the workers were working. It's very dangerous. So valves do need to be cut in, and that's what we're looking to do. All right? It's been like that since the pump station's been built. We are adding to the pump station. We're trying to make it better. So for people to say, oh, we're going to get inundated with sewage, you've been un inundated with sewage from time to time in certain areas. These valves are gonna allow us to do the work in the pump station, the main pump station, that needs to be done. It needs to be done, and we're doing it. it just takes time, everything takes time. Veterans Field, we've been working on for some time. This wasn't a rush thing. It's been in the works for quite some time. Everything, when we worked on Mayhill Street to, to take that property over, that went on for months and months and months. All right, again, did we rush? No. Caldwell Ave and Legregni Street, we looked at both of those pieces of property. In fact, the residents on Legregni Street are upset now because of the, the school that wants to go in there. The amount of traffic, it, again, and that's in the litigation, so I don't even want really to go there. Um, and again, um, just like to wish everybody a safe and ha health and happy uh, school year and uh, do your best out there. Thank you. Just to piggyback on what uh, Anthony said about things passing unanimously, it's true that uh, the board, the council, has worked uh, together very diligently to try and get things done and try and make Township of Soderbrook a better place than from before we were elected. Everyone's elected. Flo's been here longer than anyone. I think then it's me and then these two guys and Joe. So I think we all have the same idea, and that is to help out Saddlebrook. Uh, and the reason that it passes unanimously most of the time, with, with few exceptions, uh, sometimes I'm the person voting against the majority, um, is that we do have work sessions and we do 
speak to each other and hash out the issues. So it's not as if when we come here and take a vote, it's usually not the first time that we're seeing something. We've already had an opportunity to discuss it, discuss the issues, uh, see what both sides of the issues are. And sometimes, like the bond, we do meet in the middle. Because originally, I think it was supposed to be 1.1. Somebody said 1.5. Met in the middle at 1.3. Now, the reason that it's 2.1, just so we can get that, is that the bond requirement is that we have to put everything in the bond, even though there is $800,000 that is already dedicated, $402,000 or change uh, that the town is matching funds for the 402000 open space grant. Again, I thank the township uh, workers, uh, Mr. Latico and the Mr. Verrilli, Ms. DeMaria, who helped us uh, to get that. So we have to bond 2.1 or we have to go out potentially for a bonding of 2.1. We already know that it's uh, 1.295, I think. And in the bond specifically, it does say that we can't actually borrow more than 1.295. Um, so, although it's, it technically says 2.1, it's really just, just under 1.3. Um, on another note, again, I'd like to repeat what some of the council members have said, welcoming back the children and the teachers. Uh, it wasn't the best summer weather-wise, but uh, now it seems like we're in the middle of August and September. Uh, so stay cool in school, uh, and for those drivers, uh, including people dropping their kids off, who sometimes are so focused on getting their kids to school that they kind of forget that there's this uh, octagonal red thing that says stop. Uh, this morning on Facebook, I got a post uh, from one of our planning board members, uh, which just showed a car blowing through a stop sign. It didn't even tap the brakes. so. People, you got to be careful. I'm finding out exactly where that is, and I'm going to talk to the police department to maybe uh, take a special look at that intersection because he was able to just take a picture or take a video at that section because it's happened so often. And when you can just stand there and just wait and <coughs> inevitably know that inevitably somebody's going to come through, there's an issue there. So um, just be careful because there are children uh, now more than ever that are going to be around in large groups on the street. Uh, my friend and uh, donor, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Mr. Ladico, just until I'm up here, whenever my tenure ends, I'm going to have that at every council meeting, just to remind me of what a great guy Mr. Rodriguez is, who's talking and telling people about voter fraud. Let me tell you a little story that he told me. And this is when he's right. I think I won by four or five votes. I forget what it is. But I won. Uh, and, he, and he didn't. But this is what he told me. He says, you know, there's a lot of people there that uh, aren't, that voted, that shouldn't vote. And he said, you know, I was looking through the numbers or the names, and I saw some, a couple that I coached with the, with the man. And he lives out of town. So I called him up. And I asked if I can go to his house. <coughs> and I went to his house. And I sat down with him and his wife. And I explained to them that they shouldn't have voted in the Saddlebrook election because it was, they didn't live in town. And that was voter fraud. And the wife got all antsy and scared that she was going to go to jail. And he said, no, you know what? I'm not going to do anything. And to me, I'm saying, you coached with the guy. You knew his phone number. You knew where he lived, and you sat down and talked to him. And that's something that I should be worried about, that there was people voting for me that lived out of town? I mean, the heck is that? It's your, you gotta be more worried than me. There was a time that if Mr. Rodriguez wanted to appeal the decision, I mean, I've been here for two years since that election, and like everything, it seems like people keep bringing up the same garbage all the time. He could have appealed, and I think he did do something, and he, and he lost. I, but he never took it on appeal. He says because it was for the good of the community. I don't think really, honestly, that anything that Mr. Rodriguez does is for the good of the community. That's usually what's good for him. Uh, so in any event, uh, that time, it's two years past, and he's still talking uh, and chewing on sour grapes. In that particular election, just so we're aware, there were eight candidates that you, or eight slots that were open for Saddlebrook residents to vote 
from the president, congressman, the state senator, two state assembly people, three council people. Um, I think there might have been a freeholder or two. There, there were, as I recall, eight slots that were open. Seven of them were, that were elected were Democrats, and one was a Republican, and that was me. The only Democrat in that Obama year where he basically swept everybody in, that lost. The only Democrat that lost was him. So either that means that people like me or just people don't like him. I don't know. But I'll take credit for people liking me. Um, we talked about, uh, somebody came up and, and talked about how the money for the DPW and um, how do we find the money. Well, we, we're down five guys from our maximum DPW. How do we find the money? Because a lot of guys retired. And those guys were making sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year. So you add it up, times it by five. Uh, there is money. So we're looking eventually, I believe, to uh, to to try and replenish, just like we've replenished the police department to replenish the DPW. But where'd that money come from? That's where the money came from. There's less guys on the DPW than there were before, and that's how we found the money. Uh, at the you know the, the mayor brought it up to bring back five guys who were furloughed. So we brought back, we were at, you want to talk about a skeleton crew, we had nobody. Brought back the five guys that were not furloughed, that they were actually laid off, and we brought them back, including the person whose salary seems to be a, a tremendous issue. Uh, we keep hearing about the fuel increase, that we budgeted, we under budgeted the fuel. Well, I don't know if, I don't know what Exxon on Route 20 is doing nowadays, but it's $3.17 over at the Delta where I live, and it was like three eighty-five a few months ago. So some things do go down. We don't take these numbers out of a vacuum. We looked at it. Yeah, it's going to go up. We have the, the fuel expert. I know. But we can project, and that's what we projected based on last year. So that's how we do things. It's not under budgeting. It's budgeting based on a projection. A budget is a fluid object. It's basically what you think is going to happen, and you try and make your best estimate. Um, I'm not gonna, they talked about Veterans Field. We're, the bathrooms are important. Apparently, it's more important than I thought. And I'll, you know, I'm the first one to admit when I'm wrong. I didn't think that bathrooms were that big of an issue, but apparently they are. So, uh, one of the plans that, or the plan, the conceptual plan that Mr. Uh, Costa came up with, does show bathrooms, and I've spoken to to Joe on this and since I was involved in wrestling with my son being involved and know what they do, Joe being a wrestling coach for so much, uh, for so long, we'd like to get that building and have wrestling use it and have a bathroom facility there that you can access it from the inside during the winter months, access it from the outside during uh, the spring and fall and take care of both things. So this way we can maximize the space inside there. So certainly we'd like to do that. I, uh, tonight we're going to vote on the bonding for first reading. Uh, I can say that I am all in favor of it, and I think it's a good project, and I think it's something that Saddlebrook is, is going to be proud of in the future. Okay, we have ordinances next. Well,